people who are viewing us, uh, uh, how are you? How is everything? Uh, right now we are in Jinja. Still we are moving here and there. Fatwest TV, in case when you are in need of it, just go directly to YouTube, to Twitter, to Instagram. You will find us. Uh, so you are free. Whether you are in the diaspora, whether you are in Uganda here, whether you are in East Africa, wherever you are, you can access us. And I told you that now we are in different schools, moving here and there. We bring development so that you get to know. After getting to know, then you bring, whether you are to take a, your relative or child, it's up to you. Or to know, because there are some schools that are there, we have been used with those schools. Now we should get other schools. Ah, yeah. Fatwest TV, uh, it is now uh, at Busoga College, Muiri. Yes. So that's where we are. But the good thing we are having a deputy head teacher, he will take us to the lot and he will give us a background. He will tell us how this school started, uh, where they are, their challenges, uh, all of those. Uh, and uh, I've discussed with him, he's very good on explaining like how you know good teachers. Ah yeah, you are welcome. This is Fatwest TV, I'm Farouk Twestje. Uh, thank you Farouk. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Butono. I am the deputy head teacher uh, of this school. The school is Busoga College Muiri and I am directly in charge of uh, academics. Uh, thank you Fortress TV for this opportunity. Uh, Busoga College Muiri is a boys only school. It started in 1911 by the Church Missionary Society. And this school did not start on this hill, but it started in Kamuli as Valangira High School in 1911. Uh, in 1930, uh, this school relocated uh, briefly at King's College Vudo between 1930 and 1933 as they were preparing the current hill, uh, putting up buildings to ensure that by the time the children come back from Budo, they find a well-furnished institution that uh, would suit uh, them in, in their academics. So in 1933, uh, this school uh, moved to this current hill, the Busoga College Muiri Hill. And we are located just about five kilometers uh, off uh, Jinja Tororo Highway. As I said, it is a, a boys only school, and we currently have a population of uh, 800 students, and it is a boarding school. We don't have anybody. Uh, coming from out as a day student. We have a total number of uh, 69 teachers and then 70 non-teaching staff that uh, help us in a number of departments. Some of the teachers are not on government payroll. They are paid by the Board of Governors we wish to appreciate the Board of Governors, of course, also the government, for those that government is, is paying. The school is seated, we are, is seated on 657 acres of land. And when you look at 657 acres of land, that makes us uh, the biggest, in terms of space, the biggest school uh, in this country. That gives us, the, the space alone makes us uh, even better suitable for the new curriculum, the new introduced secondary school curriculum for the uh, lower secondary students. I will not at the moment say uh, much about the new lower secondary school curriculum, but 
that is how uh, big uh, this institution is. We, we are church, a church-founded school and of Soga Diocese. I wish to appreciate our Lord Bishop because he's the landlord for this uh, institution. Foundation body is uh, very important. We have a lot of uh, alumni. We have the old boys, both locally here in the country and those in the diaspora. Many of them are very prominent. I took you uh, in the main hall building where you saw on the board of fame uh, many of the prominent old boys. I can just mention a few because it's being an historical school, we cannot forget the rich history that we have gone through. The very first prime minister and first president in this country, Dr. Milton Obote, uh, a former student of this school. We have the recent prime minister, uh, Dr. Rukahana Rugunda, among others who was also an... This is a, a historical place. We have uh, head of school and head prefect. Because when you look through, for example, when you see 1968, here, you see D.R. Rugunda. He was head prefect in 1968. So, uh, head prefect and then head of school, who is the best student at A level for that year. And we, here you see very many prominent old boys. To mention but a few, uh, in 1950, the head prefect was uh, Samuiri Wako Wambuz, the former chief justice. In, uh, in 1968, you have uh, Dr. Rukahana Rugunda as the head prefect. Then in 1974, you have uh, uh, Egonda Antende as head prefect here. Uh, and then in 1977, you have the late Vasoga Nsadu as the head prefect. So you find that uh, leadership started from school. It is very evident that uh, Mwiri has uh, produced very many prominent uh, leaders in this government and they started their leadership journey from, uh, from school here. And then for the head of school, those are the best uh, uh, best student at the end of uh, senior six. So that is how historical uh, this board is. Uh, those in the before 50s, majority of them passed on, but uh, we still have many who are still living and still very much interested in their school. And we have all the boys in the academia and all spheres of life, very prominent everywhere. But uh, something which needs to be uh, uh, remembered for people out there who are viewing us is that uh, Busoga College Mwiri has its unique, unique, unique values. It is uh, a school which uh, has produced a number of leaders. We have that value addition as an institution. We do not only produce uh, results, but we produce at the same time leaders, and leadership starts here in this school. That's why you find us having so many uh, prominent old boys out there in leadership, and doing good leadership. We have uh, many stakeholders. I want to start with the current 
students community which is very very much interested in their school our dear parents the current parents the old boys of the school we have the board of governors uh, headed by dr engineer james mulke and the parents teachers association locally here we refer to it as the Vukompata. Uh, that is a brief uh, history of uh, this institution and I want to finally say that we are very very grateful to all our parents and all our stakeholders because we are what we are now because of the stakeholders of this school. We simply wish to ask you uh, to give us more students who have excelled, who have performed well, such that we can have value addition to them to go out and serve humanity. I wish to thank you. People, I think you've heard the way how uh, Deputy has uh, explained about the school. For sure, he has given us uh, a good uh, biography or background of the school, and I'm sure he, you have heard everything. Uh, that is the way how he talked about leaders of Uganda. But a big number of them have not been mentioned. Because there are many. How did you perform? Uh, and do you have a passing point to say that uh, in the case when you are to come at Mweri, you have to be with the, these points? Tell them. Uh, once again, thank you so much. Uh, in Usoga College, Mweri, first and foremost, we provide holistic education. We are not uh, just an academic institution, but as I said, there is a lot of value addition to the children from uh, all circles. So we produce a, a holistic person, a holistic individual. Uh, in addition to the academics, the curriculum, which is academic, we also have co-curricular activities uh, that we carry out in this school. We do a lot of games and sports, very, very rich in games and sports. We play football, we play volleyball, we play cricket, we play basketball, we have rugby, we have lawn tennis, all the racket games are played in this institution. institution. We also have mind games, we play drafts, we play chess, we play morabaraba, we play siyanji, some of these games are unique to Soga College Mwiri, they are not, you can't find them anywhere else. We also play the game of Go because uh, we want to provide a holistic education. We have a number of clubs and societies. Our children, uh, each and every child must belong to at least a club or a society or a sport, must participate in a particular sport. We do not allow children to simply remain there as academicians. So I, I found it important uh, to mention that we provide holistic education. So besides the co-curricular activities, uh, maybe something I needed, uh, I shouldn't miss out. We are a cricket powerhouse in this country. Yes, when you talk about cricket, I want to tell you among the cricketers, you cannot miss Busoga College Mwiri because we out of the 21 times we have played the national uh, championship for schools cricket, Mwiri has taken it 16 times uh, single-handedly as an institution. Sometimes you might think that it is uh, a game for, for only Busoga College Mwiri. There are no other participating uh, schools. On the side of academics, we have continued to excel. Uh, in the, just the recent uh, released UCE examinations, we registered 40 students in Division 1 and 48 in Division 2. About our intake, 
this is a national school. Even when we are, we are located in the sub-region of Vusoga, we don't have incidentally many, uh, so many Vasoga in this school. We've attracted students uh, from all over the country and that also makes us unique. And that's why we, when I was talking about the alumni in this school, the names that I mentioned, Obote, Rugunda, Kanyehamba, you know, none of them is a bone of uh, this sub-region. So we've continued to attract children from all corners of this country, uh, thus making us a national school. We accept children uh, who have uh, passed with the first grade. Because we are looking at value addition, that is uh, what we feel is good enough. But you find that out there, there are children who, in the rural remote areas, who might not have gotten a first grade, but they are academically sound. Some of them have been attracted, we've accepted them, and when they come to this institution, they still perform exceptionally well. But on the whole, uh, if there are children out there who would wish to join this great institution and you have gotten a first grade and you are a boy, kindly feel free to contact us, to contact Soga College Mwiri for placement. We shall be glad to receiving you. Okay, people who are viewing, uh, I think you've heard the, the way how our visitor, uh, let us uh, call him our visitor, though we are at his school, but uh, uh, we are happy to host you at no, on Fatwest TV. Thank you. Oh, there is a message you you pointed out. Uh, for sure, it was nice. But uh, there is what I uh, I want to ask you. Uh, what could be the challenges you have already faced since uh, you started this institution? And if possible, when you are answering, you tell us even achievements. Okay. Thank you. Uh, once again, I'm Paul Butono. I have been asked to talk about the challenges uh, and also the achievements that this school uh, has. I wish to start with challenges. This school being 113 years uh, old, I did mention that it was started in 1911. Uh, that test of time already poses the, a challenge of uh, uh, dilapidated infrastructure. Uh, it has been a challenge. We are doing a lot of maintenance, but the, we are doing a lot of maintenance, but the cost of maintenance is quite high. The school is extremely big with uh, a lot of very old buildings which we have to maintain and that is one of the biggest challenges that we are facing currently. Some of the structures still have asbestos but we are happy to mention that the uh, government is interested in supporting us and we feel that the issue of uh, asbestos shall soon be addressed by the government. We are looking forward to that time to happen. Being located on the hill, we are also challenged with the uh, uh, water crisis. Uh, we pump national water from downhill and many times uh, this pumped water is, uh, okay, the pump is shared by the surrounding communities. So pumping water is rationed. So we have a challenge of uh, running, uh, uh, especially the water borne facilities because of the limited amounts of water. As a school, we have tried to address this challenge by doing a lot of water harvest, but that is also seasonal. It is not throughout there. Uh, basically, those are the two main challenges that uh, this institution is facing. 
about achievement, uh, needless to mention, it is an achievement to stand this test of time of 113 years old. Uh, many schools uh, might have, would have uh, collapsed, but by being still sound and uh, producing uh, quality persons, it is a very, very big achievement. We have uh, a very strong uh, alumni, the old boys out there who are very supportive uh, to their fellow old boys and to the current students. We produce uh, holistically educated children who go out there and uh, impact on society. Uh, that is very key and it is a very big achievement to us as an institution because our children go out there and you can even tell that uh, this student here, for people who have educated children in this school, can ever tell that this is a Muiri product because they stand out uh, in society in terms of skills that they go out with from this institution. People who are, who are viewing Fatwes TV, I think you are seeing geographical, mm. geographical location of Busoga. College Muir. College Muir. Yes. Uh, my officer, what is your say on this geographical location? Yes, uh, thank you Fatwes TV. Uh, our view, viewers out there, we are still located at Busoga College Muiri Hill. Uh, somebody might think that uh, uh, the location is different, but this uh, institution is uh, geographically located uh, on a very beautiful hill. Uh, this hill is the highest point between Jinja and Tororo, and where we are located, where I am standing now, I'm in the library compounds of the school, but you can see behind me, you can see a very beautiful scenery of Lake Victoria. You can have a very, very, I think this is the best view you can ever have in this country of Lake Victoria. And while you are here, you can see the entire uh, Ginger City and the, the surrounding uh, towns. Oh, viewers, I think you, are, you have heard the way how the deputy HM has uh, pointed out. But there is this question. I don't know whether you have been following. There is what is going on in Uganda. There is a big gap between science teachers and art teachers. What is your say on that point? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we, it is true uh, that the science teachers, government pays science teachers uh, much better than the teachers of arts uh, subjects. Uh, but us as Soga College Muiri, being a government aided school, I wish to say that. Uh, we must support government because it is a government policy. We cannot work against the government, whereas we appreciate that it is important that uh, we should have uh, all members of staff paid equitably, but we have also to be patient with government because we very much know that government is thinking about uh, all the teachers in totality. This is just a starting point. The increments are going to be there for everybody. Only that it has started with the science teachers. Uh, the arts teachers will also soon uh, get on board. And I believe uh, in the nearby future, all of us will be paid uh, equally. At the moment, we have continued to talk to our members of staff on the other side. Uh, who are the arts teachers to patiently wait but we continue working hard to help our children to excel as also we lobby government 
to see that uh, we eventually all of us get on board and be paid uh, well, just like the teachers of science. Then I also uh, remember you posed the question of how much we are paying in terms of fees. This institution is still very affordable. I said we are a government school, we are not here doing business. We have teachers and non-teaching staff who are paid by government. Our fees is affordable, it is moderate. For the continuing students, they are paying uh, 1,300,000 shillings a term. Uh, and when you compare this fees with what some of the private schools are paying, you actually come to appreciate that uh, we are affordable and yet we are providing very good education to the children, holistic education. Our products out there are much, much better than some of those that are coming from schools that are charging a little much higher than Busoga uh, College Muiri. We are very, very well positioned in the new lower secondary school curriculum. I want to mention, I don't think that there is any school which is handling the new lower secondary curriculum better than Busoga College Muiri. We are going to take you through, my director of studies is going to take you through some of the activities that the children are doing, that we are equipping the children, the, uh, equipping children with the skills, uh, such that out there you can be in position to see how we are managing the lower secondary curriculum and how skilled the product of Muiri will be when it's done with the four years or six years uh, to come. I beg that we be patient shortly. We shall take you through this uh, together with the Director of Studies. There is what is going on in Parliament. You see MPs are trying to tell the public that there are some schools that are charging highly. They, are, they, are, they, are but they call it to extort. There is the way how they explain the, that point. Yes. For you, what, what is your say? Because there are some schools that charge 5 million, 7 million. Uh, what is your say? Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, schools that are charging uh, a lot of fees from parents, I do want to mention that uh, whereas, whereas Busoga College Muiri, a government-aided school, we are out here to serve all Ugandans, to make education affordable to all Ugandans. I wouldn't wish to say that uh, schools should not charge a lot of money or they should charge a lot of money, but I also want to mention that uh, it would be better for all schools out there to ensure that education is uh, affordable for all children in this country. And they should be in position to attain good education. What is making uh, some of these schools uh, more expensive than others in terms of uh, fees might not be practically true. So I simply want to uh, support the parliament to do further investigations and if they can come up with a structure which should enable us uh, obtain quality education but at the same time affordable to all Ugandans, me I would think that would be the way to go. But as far as when I, re I reflect on what we are doing here in Soga College Muiri, I want to believe that the fees structure which is in place can still, give, can still be affordable to all Ugandans but at the same time it has enabled us to give holistic education, quality education to the children who have managed to come to this, to, to, to this institution. People who are viewing Fatwest TV, uh, we are still at the Mwiri. The traditional school in, the, in Uganda, not only in Usoga, but in Uganda. 
Right now, we are with the, the director of studies. Let him take us through. You know, they have a pro, there is a program that came, which is very new. Uh, it is a, a, a new curriculum. Uh, let him take us through. Then we hear. People, uh, I think people can know you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mwanda Samuel is my name. Here at Mwiri, I work as the director of studies. And uh, I've been asked to take you through the new lower secondary curriculum. Uh, this curriculum was rolled out in 2020. And uh, as the Mwiri, we are very privileged to be in a red state to conduct the new curriculum. In Mwiri, what makes us different from other schools, we really have the ability to handle this curriculum, as I shall elaborate. In the first place, we have adequate facilities to handle the curriculum. Uh, in terms of classrooms, we have very many. In terms of science laboratories, we have seven functional labs. So we can offer sciences, students can conduct practicals. We have uh, a computer center. We are having internet connectivity 24 seven. Uh, besides that, if we go to the number of subjects that we offer, here at Mwiri, we do not limit. In fact, we have uh, given our learners a wide range of subjects. Else where they dictate, they can say maybe we are offering art or agriculture. But here, among the optional subjects, we allow students to pick what they can. We offer them all. For instance, we have technical drawing, we have agriculture, entrepreneurship, art, to mention but a few. So generally, our curriculum is rich. Besides that, uh, we, we are able to handle the vocational section very well. By voc vocational section, I mean the vocational subjects that require hands-on, vocational and technical, in fact. For instance, technical drawing. Students have the ability or they are exposed to woodwork. They can do simple carpentry. They can do welding. Our students can draw plans. Uh, if we go to entrepreneurship as a vocational subject, we have a bakery whereby our learners are trained to bake bread. Leaving that alone, we also have the agriculture department. This is one of the richest departments in terms of projects. For instance, we have got an apiary whereby we train our learners, we skill our learners in beekeeping. Uh, the apiary is down there over the terrace. We have also a greenhouse. What you see over there is a greenhouse under construction. It is a commercial greenhouse. Uh, and uh, we have got partners like Avis. They have really facilitated us in the construction of that uh, greenhouse. And I think in a few days it will be fully operational. We have a greenhouse whereby we skill our learners uh, in the horticulture section. We trained them to grow vegetables. And this time round, given our greenhouse, we are going to deal in high value crops with export potential. Additionally, we have a, a fish farming project. And then the fish farming, we have some four ponds, earthen ponds, where we demonstrate to our learners how to do fish farming. They are fully stocked with cut fish. We have also another project under steel fish farming that is called aquaponics. Under aquaponics, 
there is an integration of vegetables and fish farming. So down we grow, we, we rear fish, then on the top of the waters we put vegetables. So that integration is there. So here, this is the fish farming project where we demonstrate to our learners how fish can be farmed. You can imagine this is a rock, but these four ponds were established. We dug at least one meter deep each, and we aligned them with uh, taplines. And as you see, this water has stayed for over here. Mm. These ponds are fully stocked with catfish, and our learners get a field. They come here for hands-on. We do not only train theory, but they get a practical touch. And from here, some get inspired. Those who have the ability can establish commercial fish ponds at their homes. And uh, really, this is so helping in uh, conducting the new curriculum. Then here, uh, this is called the aquaponic unit. It is also under construction, as you are seeing. Uh, aquaponics is an integration of vegetables and fish. So these tanks, inside the, we shall put the fish, tilapia, and on top, these ones shall be cut, and there is a mechanism of supporting the vegetables that we shall put. So the essence is that uh, these two will ecologically benefit from one another. The fish will benefit and the vegetables equally do what? Benefit. And uh, over there, we want to establish another greenhouse, a small greenhouse. And we want to, we, we want to demonstrate the ecological relationship between the various units. For instance, here, we are going to establish, rather to put a solar panel. We have the panels already. Now that solar panel will provide the energy that will pump this water, both from the pond and from the tanks. It will recycle that water. So this water will be rich in ammonia. That water will go to the tank. Now from the tank, it will be distributed to, to the greenhouse, such that our vegetables will be produced organically. We shall not be adding fertilizers, commercial fertilizers, but we want that organic relationship. So that is what we do here, basically. So in conclusion, as a department here of agriculture, we have the fish farming. We demonstrate to our learners both the fish ponds and the tanks. You can grow fish even at home. Fish can be reared, rather. You can rear fish at home, in the backyard, in a building, we can also produce food or minimize the expenses by producing the maggots. We have got the poultry unit, which will also be benefiting from the, the, the black soldier flies. We have also constructed a larvarium and an insectarium. These are to do with the black soldier fly project. Black soldier fly, these ones give rise to maggots. So maggot farming is also becoming a lucrative business. This one is important in the sense that uh, it cuts down the cost of feeding. You know, in farming, mostly in animal farming, the greatest budget, the greatest cost is incurred on feeding. So to cut the feeding expenses, we have come up with this project so that the maggots can be fed to livestock, like the fish, the chicken, even pigs, they can be fed on the maggots. Now here is where we, we, we skill our learners in black soldier fly production, that is maggot farming, in other words. The other smaller unit you see is an insectarium where we breed the insects. Then the other bigger one is the larvarium. We do even the harvesting from there. I can take you inside and you see the inner makeup. Yeah, so this is a new project under construction. Yeah, you can see when it is freshly constructed. 
and uh, by next week it will also be fully functional and uh, we managed to establish this structure with the help of avis partners who are involved in skilling the youth so this unit will be very useful in producing maggots that will supplement the feeding of the fish the poultry and the pigs and uh, additionally uh, they are so rich in proteins. You know, these days, getting silver fish, which they call mkene, is a hurdle. It is really so expensive, and uh, we've come up with this innovation to overcome the expenses involved in looking for mkene. Yes. <laughs> so over there is a poultry unit. It can house over 1,000 birds. And uh, that is where we train or we skill our learners in poultry farming. We have the greenhouse, we have also bee farming, we have an apiary over there and a greenhouse. Those are some of the projects that we conduct here. Uh, there is one project that I didn't mention of. That space you see, that is where our learners stay, and we, we, we train them. We train them in crop improvement. We do grafting, okay? And at the end of it, we encourage each learner to go back with at least a seedling. It could be a mango seedling, tomatoes. Uh, we even graft tomatoes and oranges. So that is a demonstration site. So to break the classroom, Boredom. We expose our learners here. We put them in such an environment. You can even feel the ambience. So here they do hands-on business. So basically that is how we are moving on with our curriculum. Okay, people who are viewing Fatwas TV, that is where we are. I think you've heard the way how gentleman has explained. He's a good teacher. For me, I've been on camera, but hearing what is. For sure it was, uh, should I call it seducing me, I, that I also started the same. But that is the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, um, Farouk Tresje, I think, until another day.